Hi guys, IVC. Thank you for checking out the video. Today I want to show some of my library records and soundtracks from the 70s. Recently there has been reissues of some albums I didn't know existed. I didn't know this was available. But it is amazing in this golden age of final we are living in that so many albums are coming out which are incredible. And this is a great example, Jungle Obsession. By, uh, it's made by Nino Nardini and Roger Roger. That sounds Italian, but I, as, as I understand, his parents were Italian, but he uh, was born in France. This is from 71, and it is surprising, the music that is on it. It's a library record, so it has never been released commercially. And partly, I understand this, partly, why not? So it's a lot of this jungle sounds, uh, exotica, I still call it jazz funk. I call everything just jazz funk, but it's funky, it's jazzy. And the whole album is like this, it's all uh, short songs, two to three minutes, the whole album is like just over 30 minutes. Skip to the next one. So they put in some guitar, percussion, you name it. Some songs are also a little bit more lounge, but still, many of them are like this. This is great. And the next album I want to show, I shouldn't do it as a second one because it's the best I have or that I have found till now. Maybe there are better ones, but this is Feelings and it blew me away. It's a monster. It's really a monster album of jazz funk. It's from 74, I believe. It's called Feelings. Um, let me check. And it is uh, made by, well, it states on the front. Made by the music is by Jay Richford and Gary Steven, but it turns out they are not the real names of the producers. Uh, the real uh, people who made it are Stefano Torossi and let me check the other name uh, Sandro Brugnelli. Brugnellini. Sorry, my Italian is bad. The other ones are even more difficult to pronounce, so that can be fun. Um, what they did is they had contracts with other labels and they put this out and then they split uh, what they, the royalties and I don't really know that. It's fun because John saw this one uh, in, uh, in the back and he called it uh, the Stefano album. But that is nowhere mentioned or it was not on the original one. So to give you a taste, I will do this from the start. because. It really has that a little bit of black exploitation in it. Those Italians, they can copy anything. They can do anything and make it better even. So, this was not part of a movie. It was just made to be part of a movie, I guess. Or they could take parts of it. I don't know. But, but this whole album just plays like one big jazz funk album. Skip it to the next song. Some are a little bit more easily listening, but not in this one. It's all it has that funky vibe. Some flute. I really I can go. Well I will do it. I will do the next one also. Now th this is really an amazing album. So happy to have this one. That this, if you're going to check one of the albums I'm showing, take this one as as a start because it's really fun, and I think you will like it. Well, if you like jazz funk, you will for sure like it. 
So to go to the next one, it's not so easy to pull this one up. This is by Oscar Rocci. And I think this is more typical for the library records to have a more universal uh, sleeve. This one is again uh, Italian, like the previous one. Um, if I guess it right, it's made in uh, Roma. These are all reage shoes. I don't, the originals are available, but you have uh, must have won the lottery or something, then you can play them, and I would love to own them. I mean, if I ever won the lottery, I will just go on uh, Discogs and say, yes, yes, yes. But till that time, I have to do with this one. Oh, nice breaks. This one is from 77, if I remember correctly. All are mostly um, electronic, so some roads, electric piano. And if you go to the more easy listening or they, the Italians still kept that funkiness under it, which makes it interesting. That makes it um, very enjoyable. I think, I don't know if they are available in the US, because all the albums I'm showing are released in Europe. And for sure they must be also available in the US. But I'm curious if you can find it, it's easy to find them or not. Next one I will go to the movie and it turns out that the Italians they like women uh, or women um, so Il Corpo I believe it's from a uh, porn movie or a soft porn or a romantic movie I'm not sure I've not seen the movie I only know the music the music is great this is really it's made by Piero Umiliani first let me take off some I believe this in three parts, uh, the movie, or there, there are three different movies. And this is the last one in the series. Il Corpo. Uh, well, I think they uh, also copied the label and everything, because all the artwork is very nice. All the records are very good, the pressings are great. This is more quiet, this is more relaxing because it has to go with the movie. They, okay, there will be big moving things in the movie and slower periods, and this is more for the slower period. But this also, you can hear that the players, they knew what they were doing. Probably typical studio players who wandering from studio to studio and they really knew how to which to pick to make the music because what I'm learning is that especially oh, first skip the song there is that um, Pieri Umiliani is not that famous but he really has like Henry Mancini and Henry Morricone They're all from Italy all making music for movies. And the last one I want to show, the last record, is a little bit of a special one, but it goes very well with this one. And that is uh, The Golden Age of the Danish Pornography, Volume 1. And this is fun. Um, it's made by an Italian guy who lives in Denmark, Alex Pudu. And what I understand is that he met a guy who made hardcore porn in, the, in Denmark in the beginning of the 70s. He did that still on 8mm and there is no sound on it. And he wanted to re-release those uh, short movies and he asked Alec Pudu, can you put some music on it? And he did. And he's a master at it. It, it is really... Especially if now that you heard your previous songs, 
it's not so difficult to see the different uh, parts. Let me take side B. And because it are all short movies, they also have a title which go with the movie and that's fun because I will read out some. This is Naughty Girls at the Wild Party. And I would say, good music for it. Must be good for it. And if I skip to the next one, that will be Madame Delight. So, this is all recently uh, uh, produced. I think the album is from... Is it somewhere mentioned? Let me search for it. I cannot find the date, but I think it's 2010 or something. Maybe 2009. And Alex Pudo, he plays most of the instruments. So he plays uh, the drums, the bass, the guitar, the synthesizer, the percussion, the backing vocals. Uh, he has some guests who do the electric piano, organ, and saxophone, flute, and trumpet. And it really has this vibe. And I must say, I really like it. Well, this was the last record. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, everybody take care and see you in the next video.